hospitalised. Many of the wounded, they are saying, had injuries to their stomach and hands. So uh, that coming in to us uh, from the Reuters news agency. Let's speak to Firaz Maksad, who's a senior fellow at the Middle East Institute, a think tank based in Washington, D.C. And in terms of what we are seeing playing out, a second day of these explosions, what is your headline thought? Yeah, the headline thought here is that Israel is very much here taunting Hezbollah, almost daring it to broaden this war. Listen, Israel has already established escalation dominance in this 11-month conflict now. Uh, I think Hezbollah and, and Iran both have been hesitant to broaden this war, not because they are responsible actors in the region, but because obviously they prefer indirect warfare with Israel and to use asymmetric warfare rather than a direct broaden war here. Uh, I also think that, you know, to, to blind Hezbollah this way, to deafen it this way by taking it out, its communication network, uh, really bring down much of its ability to command and control in battlefield, uh, that is a significant blow to the organization. Obviously, uh, you know, the big question of the hour here, is this a prelude for a broader campaign that Israel is about to launch? something similar to what happened in the Six-Day War in 67, when Israel launched a preemptive attack against the Egyptian Air Force before a major war took place? Or was this driven by the fact that uh, perhaps some in Hezbollah were onto this breach and therefore Israel had to carry out the operation? We don't know, but certainly everybody in Lebanon and the region are holding their breath for what's to unfold in the next couple of hours. How weakened do you think Hezbollah will be? I mean, I think Hezbollah definitely has the weaker hand here. It finds itself in uh, an, a policy dilemma, as we've said before, that should it respond and respond forcefully in an attempt to restore much of its lost deterrence, uh, it really runs the risk of playing into uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, the Israeli prime minister's hand, if, in fact, he does want to broaden that conflict and is looking for a pretext. If it doesn't, that invites further Israeli actions and will allow the Israelis to push the line even further. So the hope here, at least, and I do think it's the unlikely scenario at this point, is that there is a third pathway, which is one of diplomacy. And the U.S. and the Biden administration have been very active putting forward on the table uh, an outcome, a diplomatic off-ramp that would see Hezbollah redeploy away from the Israeli border and Israel also perhaps withdraw so from some of the points of, of uh, conflicted points uh, along that blue line, that border between Israel and, and Hezbollah. But before we even get there, I think Hezbollah very much will need to have some kind of a performative response in order to save face here against Israel, at a minimum. The thing is that your hope that we move in the direction of de-escalation, every single pointer at the moment seems to be in the opposite direction. Absolutely. The trend line couldn't be any clearer in the 11-month conflict whether it was first, you know, targeting Hezbollah and targeting Hamas, as I would I'd say, uh, chief in Lebanon in the heart of the Hezbollah southern suburbs, then targeting Hezbollah's chief of staff in that same area, thwarting uh, Hezbollah's uh, response or expected response a few weeks ago, and now these two, two days of concurrent attacks uh, injuring thousands and at least some 500 Hezbollah members losing their eyesight as a result of that. So the, the trend line couldn't be any clearer. It's an escalatory trend line. Uh, whether that gets us to the brink and then encourages the parties to pull back from the brink, that's a whole different question. But I'm certainly not one who is optimistic here. What are you on the tactics used so far from the Americans? Anthony Blinken in the region again, calling for de-escalation. He's done that so many times. And many analysts have pointed to the need for, for actually decisive activity, the U.S. using its real levers of influence as opposed to, to just words. Do you share that view or do you think Anthony Blinken is broadly travelling the right path? Let me put it this way. I was in the room last week when Amos Hochstein, President Biden's envoy to try and find a diplomatic outcome for this conflict, uh, was talking very clearly, basically arguing that Israel will not be able to achieve militarily here what it has failed to achieve through diplomacy and, and pressure, that thousands will not be able to return to their homes in northern Israel as a result of a devastating conflict that will only cause further, further destruction 
in northern Israel and in southern Lebanon. Now, <laughs> that said, the situation in Israel is also unsustainable from an Israeli perspective. And Hezbollah has been adamant, really refusing to seize its cross-border activities in support of Hamas in Gaza. I think from a, from a Lebanese standpoint here, one has to also point out that this war that Hezbollah has launched on October 8th against Israel, supposedly a support front for Hamas in Gaza, has been largely unsuccessful. The, 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 the returns on that have been very poor for Hezbollah. Israel proceeded to destroy Gaza, dismantle significant portions of Hamas, and it has only reaped destructions on, brought destruction on, on Lebanon. So it, there's also a sense here amongst many uh, in Lebanon, certainly in Washington, that Hezbollah ought to stop for a moment, recalculate. It faces very bad options and perhaps, again, find a way to save face, but take that diplomatic offer and being offered by Washington. How close do you think we are to an all out war between Israel and Hezbollah? I think we could be days, if not hours away. If, if the parties in the region do not make the right moves, uh, the risk of escalation here, escalation that would quickly spiral out of control, is significant. Uh, on the Israeli side, perhaps there is also the thinking that Washington here is, is essentially a lame duck. Uh, the sitting president is non, not running for re-election. Uh, we have a period, particularly between November 5 and January 20th, when a new administration is expected to be sworn in, where Israel will be free, largely free of the kind of pressure that America can bring to bear on it. So real concerns here that that coming period between now and January 20th may, might allow Bibi Netanyahu in Israel more leeway to operate as he wants to uh, on that northern border with Lebanon against Hezbollah. Just a final thought, because Anthony Blinken saying today, and, and of course what we're seeing in Lebanon and Hezbollah so linked to what we've seen in Gaza post October the 7th. But Anthony Blinken today saying that he was making progress in terms of trying to get a ceasefire. He thought 15 of the areas had got agreements, three more remained outstanding. But when you hear the Americans constantly talking up the hope of getting a ceasefire, how much do you think? Anthony Blinken and the Americans, in effect, are being played to give time for a full military operation? Well, I mean, allow me to respectfully disagree with Mr. Blinken here. The administration has been sounding that optimistic note for, for months now, and we all understand why they need to for political reasons. We are in election season here in Washington. And the administration has also staked much of its strategy and approach on that ceasefire in Gaza, which remains elusive. Now, if we're to talk of the details, yes, you could be 90 percent uh, to where you need to be, but that last 10 percent is crucial. And Hamas's ex execution of the, of the six prisoners, the six hostages it had uh, in its possession, only further complicated the talks a couple of weeks ago. And certainly the Israeli Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu is insistent that Israel would not withdraw from the, the Philadelphia corridor, that crucial kind of uh, border between Israel, between Egypt and, and Gaza, which is a sticking point for Hamas, for Egypt, it's a non-starter, and very much being used by the Israeli prime minister as perhaps a pretext to continue this war and to preclude uh, a ceasefire. So yes, I think that we're going to be nowhere near a ceasefire in Gaza, and unfortunately Hezbollah and Iran continue to insist on that as a precursor to unlocking any kind of a diplomatic deal on the Lebanon-Israel front. Firaz Maxad, we have to leave it there, but thank you for joining us here on the 